Okay, so let's take a look at those cells, shall we? So right here, you can see the intertropical convergence zone. That is around the equator. Now, we saw it wander, so it's not exactly at the equator. Now, at the equator, we have warm air rising, and we said actually earlier, if you can get um, air to rise, it will have, uh, the, this is the LCL, lifting condensation level. We can have clouds, we can actually have precipitation. Um, it actually will hit the tropopause, the top of the troposphere, and it will head both ways. So one of the things, though, here at the intertropical convergence zone, guess what? We have a lot of precipitation. We have a lot of precipitation. So here, um, part of that will move to the north um, to complete the Hadley cell in the north, and the other part will head towards the south to complete the Hadley cell in the south. Um, here about 30 degrees north or so, approximately, right, we'll have descending air in both hemispheres. But the descending air, remember we said that descending air actually will become smaller and smaller. And actually it, has, it does what we call adiabatic warming. So instead of cooling, it warms. So here actually oftentimes is where we find our deserts. Around here about 30 degrees where the Hadley cell is, it has this leg of descending air. Um, that leg of descending air then will go both directions. When it splats to the Earth's surface, part of it will go this way back towards the intertropical convergence zone or the equator to finish the Hadley cell. These are Hadley cells. And the other part will actually go this way to start the feral cell. I can never remember if it's two R's or two L's or Looks like I just have one L there. Okay, so there's that. That's the Hadley cell. Like I said, potential for deserts here where that descending air is. Okay, so this figure is showing you actually all cells. So let's take a look at the Hadley cell first. Um, so this is your, I'll put H for your Hadley cells, I'll put F for your feral cells, and I'll put P for your polar cells. Again, I get six cells instead of our three cell model. But if we focus on the Hadley cell, notice that that descending air here at the Earth's surface about 60 degrees, it will want to go actually um, towards the equator and be deflected to the right. And deflection to the right actually then creates these, um, an easterly wind. Actually, since they kind of come from the north, it's called the northeasterly wind. Okay, and guess what? Here at the southern hemisphere, we have a southeasterly wind, and guess what they do? They converge at the intertropical convergence zone. Actually, there's where the word converge enters in the I-T-C-Z, intertropical convergence zone, where the two cells start. Now, they're about, um, there near the intertropical convergence zone, we get these light winds. They're called horse latitudes, where they have the light winds. And no kidding, they, they got the word horse latitudes because back in the days when they used to transport um, horses, okay, when they got stuck with these light variable winds, they would have and need to lighten their load, they would throw their horses overboard. I don't know if that's true or not, but I heard that. That must be true. Um, so yeah, like I said, the deflection to the right from that uh, leg of wind coming from about 30 degrees gives us kind of this um, northeasterly uh, wind. We call those northeasterly wind trade winds. So the north northeasterly trade winds in the southern hemisphere would be southeasterly trade winds. Sometimes they're just called collectively the easterly trade winds. They're associated with the surface Hadley winds. Um, yeah. I think that's all good. So let's move on to the next cell. Now the next cell in both hemispheres would be the feral cell. Um, and we'll just kind of focus on the northern hemisphere now. So the, the feral cell basically picks up about 30 degrees north. Okay, It has this um, wind that actually would go from 30 to 60 and it's deflected to the right which actually gives us our um, our westerly, it's deflected to the east, which gives us a westerly wind. We call those actually mid-latitude westerly winds at the surface there in the feral cell. And so in case you 
um, get a test question about this, we actually live in the feral cell because we're, what, about 42? And it's between 30 and 60, so we are definitely feral cell children. Um, let's see. So here about 60 degrees or so, the way I think I've heard it is basically that kind of air kind of bunches up and it rises up, okay, kind of a column of air bunches and rises, and so it actually hits the tropopause and part of it goes this way to finish the feral cell and the other part goes this way as part of what? The polar cell, okay, that last cell that goes up to 90. Um, yeah. Okay, so the polar cell, okay, the polar cell, the way I think of it is I start, I kind of think of it as starting at the pole. So about 90 degrees, we have um, cold, dense air, so we have a high pressure up at about 90 degrees. And from that high pressure, then we have air going along the surface towards, um, towards the equator. And if it is deflected to the right, that actually then is what gives us our other easterly. We have actually a, a um, easterly surface wind up there um, called the polar easterly. Um, okay, what else do we have? So I show, I'm showing right here another feature about 60 degrees. 60 degrees is significant because that's where the feral and the polar cell meet up approximately we actually have something called the polar front. And you know, we've talked about weather fronts is where you have clashing air. And so we definitely have some clashing air there. Um, I think that finishes that section.